interesting um, 36 hours, actually like interesting 10 years, <laughs> we yeah. could say, but a really interesting like week. And and you kind of co come across the, the top here. I'm going to talk about pieces of this. You can talk about some other pieces of this. There's a whole bunch of 18A stuff. There was a deprioritization of 20A, a prioritization of 18A, a, a TSMC node. I knew that. I tweeted something a little bit inaccurately. I apologize for it. Thank you, by the way, all of you that corrected me. It was really important. That was the takeaway of my 2000 word dissertation. Um, what do you say about credibility, Pat? I guess I blew it early. Dude, um, dude, anybody with a f brain. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's fine. I just laughed because, like I said, did you read any of the rest of it? Is that all we got out of it? It's, it's like being at home, dude. It's like I give the whole story and then someone tells me, you know, like your shoelace is untied. Thank you. Like that. All right. I digress. So let's like, I'm going to, I'll hit a couple of these things. Maybe you want to hit a couple and then we can kind of go back and forth on what you think is worthwhile of talking more about. So just really quickly, Lip Bhutan, board member at Intel, left the board, did it very, um, you know, did it amicably in terms of his public note. But, you know, this guy, a legend in semiconductors, sem uh, cadence CEO, clearly disenfranchised with the direction of the company. Um, not a good not a good look. And of course, we heard after that, you know, risks about activists, risks about starting to do further breakups of the company. We saw, you know, that there was basically a board meeting coming up. Everything is on the table. We're now hearing, uh, by the way, I read a new note in Reuters today about Qualcomm circling Intel to potentially acquire parts of its business um, if they end up having to spin them off. Check the Reuters report, Pat, if you didn't see that one. I could see Mobileye, for instance, being a really interesting play, right, for Qualcomm at this moment. Um, other things, too, potentially, but that caught my attention. Not a good look right now to have really, uh, really credible board members leaving in this particular moment in time. Um, going to be interesting kind of how they respond to that. I'll, I'll kind of tie a couple of 18A threads because you mentioned, you know, it says Broadcom 18A, 20A. Um, first of all, there was this like, kind of this narrative about Broadcom and a sample, a pre-1.0 PDK, not getting the performance out of uh, of Intel. Interesting that these rumors have dropped. There was a SoftBank rumor. There was a confirmed or confirmed, not rumor, a story related to SoftBanks and others that have been sort of testing on, on, on Intel. I think there's an enthusiasm and excitement from Intel to get things out, but clearly there's this weird leaking that's going on, Pat. And by the way, you've been around this industry even longer than I have. So I'm doing this more from, from hearsay of my experience in learning over the last decade. Um, but this stuff doesn't typically leak, like things like this. Like when you sample and you're letting customers touch this stuff, the fact that this is leaking is very odd. Um, but at the same time, you know, in my kind of long tweet, I'll put it in the show notes, you know, I kind of talk about how there's a bit of this feeling and I don't want to use the word conspiracy, but I'm going to use it because I don't know what else to use right now that, you know, Intel's kind of like the it's it's the prize fighter that's on the ground and he's on this. It's on like the four count and it's like you have the chance to punch it while it's on the ground and keep it from getting back up. There feels like there's a little bit of this circling around uh, Intel right now that, you know, maybe it's because they were the dis determined the, the government backed national champion of foundry. Maybe it's because of the ongoing you know, sort of channel and feedback we've gotten from the market that says we love TSMC. We don't care. We'll just work with them forever. Maybe it's, uh, the, you know, all the risks associated with that. But, you know, having all of its woes, all of its woes leaked out these days. But then again, we had Blackwell leaks, too. So who knows? Um, and then, of course, there was the deprioritization right now where they're basically going to double down on 18A. So right in the heels of Broadcom supposedly getting low performance on a sample pre 1.0, they also came out and said, look, we're going to skip to 20. We're going to go straight to 18. We're going to kind of compromise our five and four. But we all sort of knew, Pat, that, that, that not all five were going to be like serious nodes. Um, not serious. That's not the right word. Like full nodes maybe was the right word I'd use. Serious. Yeah. You are not serious people, Moorhead. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> in, in the process, it kind of was like a flip of indication to me, though, that they – actually feel really confident in 18a and they feel they can get capacity and they feel they can deliver a really strong part so that was a really interesting conflict or maybe rebuttal in that moment after the the broadcom story leaked um and then what it also brings some question to its own foundry and what it's doing with 20 and what it's going to be able to do going forward and of course we've got so there's just all this kind of coming together at one time pat and i and i, I know this is where I, I start to try to take four or five threads and not conflate them but Man, are they a new cycle right now? And it just feels like there's so much conviction that they nobody quite wants to see it go well. And I think that's why I think you and I are trying to just be balanced. 
about what this is. There's some good things happening, some good indicators in this, and some really concerning ones. Yeah, I've never babe, babe Ruth uh, Intel. I always said, here are the conditions for success that Intel uh, would have to do to get uh, back on top again. But but Daniel, it is knives out uh, on Intel. And you know those who don't have history uh, don't understand why knives might be out. I mean, Intel uh, was the NVIDIA of today. Okay, let's just be very clear. They are More a- Memories. They are a convicted, they are a convicted monopolist. Um, and, you know, and that's in, in the EU. Um, that's just a fact. I'm not making stuff up here. And, you know, they're still debating the fine uh, 15 years later. But uh, if you go and read the complaints from uh, AMD, and even when the FTC took a swing uh, at it, I mean, it was ugly, right? Uh, exclusionary pricing, tying, uh, even selling below cost at uh, at certain, um, you know, it was crazy. So, yeah, there are people who want Intel dead. I, I'm not I'm not surprised at all. Just look at the people who would benefit if Intel were dead, and they want Intel dead. Um, now that doesn't separate. Uh, you I know, said that in my in my tweet. Oh, you did. Okay. Um, Intel has shot themselves in the foot. Um, many, many years ago, and it's hard to get back. I mean, a, a semi turnaround takes five years, but l l let me, let me, uh, let me try to fill in not blanks or, or some oxygen you left for me. Um, you know, I was, I was wondering about lip butan and by the way, you're right. Absolute icon on the board of HPE Schneider SoftBank. The guy won the freaking Robert Noyce award in, in 2022, uh, from the, uh, the the SIA Robert Noyce uh, ex ex Intel guy, and you know the rumors said right uh, he was frustrated with the large workforce, risk averse culture, lagging strategy uh, in AI. Now the interesting thing is like the thing that uh, Pat rolled out uh, last earnings uh, seemed to address the large workforce. Um, we know what their strategy is. In AI, it looks like that'll probably be a GPU that will make an impact uh, as early as 26. Um, and risk-averse culture, I don't have the spreadsheets uh, or, or how they make uh, decisions in there. Um, so, so yeah, I I first thought that maybe Lipu was putting together um, a group of people to maybe go and put pressure uh, on Intel, maybe get uh, Pat fired or something like that. I'm not thinking that anymore. There was a lot of conversation. It's so funny. Talk about knives coming out. I think I had 60,000 people look at my post on LinkedIn about spinning out IFS. Let me be crystal freaking clear. You spin IFS out before the design company is healthy and IFS is healthy, it will fail. Now, my only caveat on there would be to take it private, okay? And and you know, don't put this thing out on the market. And you've got to, then you have to find private uh, uh, investors, and then it's a negotiation of how you fund that, right? Cap, uh, equity, debt, uh, things like that. What could make sense is you take it private, and its biggest investors. Let's say you do a third debt, or you do a third uh, capital allocation. And then a, a third of it is our investments by its potential customers. You get Apple to pony up money. You get Nvidia to pony up pony up money. You get Broadcom to uh, to pony up uh, money. Uh, and then you wait until 2027 uh, to where um, Intel Foundry uh, will be driving significant profits. And then I think 2028 before you start uh, seeing. Uh, profits. Okay. So that's where it is. Well, why do you say that? Why, why wouldn't that work? Listen, I, I was, I ran corporate marketing at AMD when we spun off uh, global foundries. I know how this works, man. Talk about two at the time, two sick puppies, right? Uh, you had AMD that was locked into long-term wafer agreements uh, that they never kept, uh, but they had to do that to keep global foundries going. And the only reason that didn't fail is uh, you had Mudabala, who was bankrolling uh, Global Foundry, 
and and internalized uh, all the uh, uh, all the losses. Uh, final comment on here. God, I love this. Could be an, a show itself. We should just have the Intel show. You know, actually, we probably should just do the Intel show. Um, yeah. <laughs> final comment. You know, I had a little bit of a side eye on. Um, okay, 18A is going so well, and by the way, their defect density does look really good uh, before going into uh, mass production. That's super. That's super. Um, super helpful. And by the way. That's true. I have no reason uh, to believe that's not true. Is a very positive sign for 18A. Then, if 18A is going so well, then why are you why are you moving um, uh, why are you getting rid of 20A? Right. It seems like you could do both. Well, hey, first off, okay, go. I had an first, answer. But you have an answer. <laughs> yeah. First off, 20A 20A uh, was designed to be a pipe cleaner for for 18A, but Moving resources from 20A to 18A, it just gets better, and you reduce uh, risk by doing it. You know, you reduce likely design risk uh, on Panther, and I know the resources are different. Uh, but you also you can apply to make those transistors, let's say, even more power efficient. Right? You have a thousand engineers. Where are you going to put them? You're going to keep them on 20A. You're going to move into 18A. Uh, so that that foots for me okay i had a little side eye in the beginning but i totally get it and it uh and it foots with me what, what were we going to say dan yeah listen um great take this was a show like we need to do like the the intel run-up pat um they have to focus i mean that was my biggest take was like in this moment in time they have to focus resources like the they're promising the world that they're going to be intelligent with their spend they're going to you know, lean out and get out of businesses that aren't driving yeah. profit for the company. You know, more nodes mean more cost. It's more setup. It's more. It's more planning. There's more engineers. There's you know all those things, Pat. Like they have to if they think they can get on 18A more quickly and ramp it, get to pro. And by the way, focus can mean more profitability, right? On a per way for basis. Yeah, man, that was a great comment. Uh, you know, uh, we didn't even talk about uh, you know potentially Brandenburg not. Uh, not happening, not to be confused with Hindenburg. Um, you know, that's German, coming next, I bet. Listen, the Germans didn't Germans didn't come up uh, with a much uh, with as much money. I could see them uh, getting rid of that. I don't understand, you know, dishing off Altera uh, completely unless they have a buyer in mind. I think what that could do is that, you know, brings them cash yeah. uh, to be able to do uh, something else, uh, Pat did talk about getting out of um, businesses that were, you know, upside down or zero revenue. I think uh, quantum uh, quantum is on the table. I think neuromorphic is on the table. And one thing that never gets talked about, but I know is a reality, is Intel. Intel has backup teams. You know, they used to have three teams that that they would put to attack a, a problem. Um, but, you know, you look at the A and B numbers and number of people they have, and it's like, wait a second, how, how, how does that work? But I'm sure there are a lot of multi-hundred million dollar projects that add up to billions that are going to get, get whacked. Yeah, I look at three things, Pat. Nail the this is PC, Copilot, AI thing. Nail the Gaudi, then, of course, to the GPU transition and become an actual player in AI. The market absolutely hates that they messed this up um, and it's unforgivable in many ways. It's not a Pat thing, by the way. This happened well before Pat. He just inherited it. the wrong architecture. That's yeah. what they did, right? Yeah. They picked an HPC architecture that was really good at 64 and 32-bit flops and yeah. they did really well they uh, out flops. there and, and, and they had an ASIC. <laughs> but the ASIC didn't save the hyperscalers enough money and they just did their own with Broadcom. Yeah, and so... You know, we'll be doing some testing on Gaudi. We'll get more out there in the in the future because there is some level of compellingness there, and they oh need God, to. God, Gaudi is compelling, and and as as we're going to talk about Broadcom, yeah. Broadcom's not even focused on the enterprise. Nope, 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 nope. And then, of course, um, you know, the third is Foundry, and you know, I, I think it's part of the differentiation is that it's under the umbrella. The spinoff would be pretty devastating in my opinion. We, I just don't know that we need another fabulous and I just don't know how successful Intel will be. Being the IDM was always sort of what made them special. So 
you know, spinning off another fabulous in this era of arm and risk and everything else that's going on. I just, it, I don't know. I don't love it. I don't love it. I understand why they might have to do it. I just don't love it.